Welcome to a new episode of my GNU slash Linux and USB tutorials. Today I want to show you how to implement your first USB endpoint on this at Mega32U4 microcontroller. So my overall goal is to turn this microcontroller into a USB GPIO expander so we can control up to 8 GPIOs over USB. And today I want to implement the logic for setting the output value of the GPIO pins. And therefore I need to implement a USB endpoint from the type bulk transfer and the direction out. So let's go. To save us a little bit of time, I've already created or prepared a little bit of code. So if I go into my microcontroller firmware's folder of my USB tutorial, you can see I have created a new folder here to bulk um, out endpoint and I will change into this folder and here once again we have our source code for building or our main function in the lib folder we have the source code for the USB logic and a make file to build everything. And first I will start by adding the endpoint and then I will show you how we can interact with the USB endpoint from the main.c file and how we can set the values of the LEDs. Okay, so first I will open up the USB source vendor um, header file because I need to add the endpoint here. Okay, so here we are defining um, endpoint zero, which always has to be there. And I will just copy these six lines here and pa paste them in here. And I will create a new endpoint one. It's from the type bulk transfer and it will also be 8 bytes in size. So let me replace this with a 1 here. So the control type is now not is now bulk and for bulk I have to set this define here to 2. Then the direction is out, this is okay. The size of the endpoint is 8 bytes, this is okay too. We have one bank and the size in a human readable form is 82. So this is okay. And then down here we have um, the number of endpoints and now I have to set it to 1 because we now have one endpoint beside endpoint 0. Okay, the rest seems okay, but now I will add some global variables for endpoint 1. So the first one is an array of 8 bytes and this and in there we will store the data which we have received from the PC. And then I need a second volatile uint variable I will call um, endpoint1 flag. And over this flag we signalize to the main function when we have received some data. And one more thing I have to add here is I need a function which gets called when there is new data for endpoint1 and I will call this function um, USB endpoint1 out here. Okay, and this should be all we need here for this header file. So now let me open up the .c file of the library. Okay, and the first thing I'm doing here is I'm also adding the global variables here. So here we have our two global variables. Okay. Then this interrupt service routine gets called whenever a new USB package was received. And here we are checking which endpoint received the package. In case um, this value is one, we have received a package for endpoint zero. In case um, we, the value here is two, we have a new package for endpoint one. So what I will do is I will set the um, USB endpoint um, switch to endpoint one. And then I will call the function USB endpoint one out here and I will do a break here. Okay, so later we have to implement this function 
But now first let's take a look at the USB descriptors because we have to add this endpoint to the USB descriptors too and we have to initialize the endpoint. Here in the init function I will um, init global variables for endpoint 1. So here I will need a for loop to Um, set everything in the buffer here to zero and I will set the endpoint one flag to zero two here. So zero means there is no package um, no package received and if I will set this to one um, the main function knows okay a new package has been received and over this buffer the main function can get access to the data which was transferred. Okay so much for the init function. Now let's add the endpoint here in the setup function. So down here we are in the configuration descriptors and a part of the configuration descriptor is also the endpoint descriptor. So let's add a new endpoint descriptor here. The first field here is the length and the length here is six, uh, 7 bytes. Then the second field here is the type of descriptor we are using here and here I will set this to 5 because 5 is the descriptor for or the number for an endpoint descriptor. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> then the next value is the number of the endpoint which is 1 in this case. Then we have to specify the attributes of the endpoint. Oh, and this does not only specify the endpoint, so here bit 7 is the direction of endpoint and this is 0 and 0 means out. If I would um, write this to 1 it would be an in endpoint. And bit 0 to 3 is the number of endpoint. Okay, then we have to specify the attributes and the attributes is the transfer type. So B and attributes will transfer type bulk. And if you remember, bulk transfers are the kind of transfers normally used for mass storages like um, USB sticks, for example, but I will use, so normally they are used to transfer a huge amount of data, but here I will just transfer 8 bytes, but I will also use a bulk transfer. Good, the next two um, bits are the size of, um, the maximum packet size of this endpoint. And here I will use these two macros to get the lower and the higher value of endpoint 1, of the size of endpoint 1. And the size here is 8 bytes. And the last variable here is a polling interval. So, but this is only used, only used for isochronous endpoints. And as we don't have an isochronous endpoint here, I can set it to zero. Okay, so that's all I have to add here in the um, descriptor. And then let's go, go down a little bit here. Yes, here. Where, so we haven't initialized the endpoint yet. And with initial, initialization, I mean we haven't set the, um, we haven't allocated the memory in the FIFO or in the SRAM for the USB packets. So we have to do this. And this is done here at the set configuration command. So first I will deinitialize the endpoint in case it is already initialized.
And what I will do here is I will set the I will set the endpoint selector to my current endpoint. Then I will disable the endpoint. <clears throat> yeah, maybe let's write the comments here. And I will free the memory which was already allocated for this endpoint. Okay, and after doing this, I can um, call the init function. Setup out. Okay, but first I have to take a look how I call this function. USB init endpoint. Yeah. This here. Yes. And here I have to um, press first the number of the endpoint, then the um, type of the endpoint, the size of the endpoint, oh, the direction of the endpoint, the size of the endpoint, and the number of banks I want to use for this endpoint. Okay, and then I will enable um, I will enable receiving of packages for this endpoint or the interrupt for receiving packages here. Okay, so now everything which is left to do is we have to implement our USB endpoint one out function which is called when a package is received here. So I will need a new variable here. Then I will check Um, if we have received new packages from the PC. And if so, I will acknowledge the package. And then I will copy the data. So, and first I will take a look if there is um, data inside of the endpoint or of the FIFO. And if so, I will just copy this data into the endpoint one buffer. And if there is no more data, I will do a break here. And last but not least, I will set the endpoint one flag to one to signalize to my main function there, new data has arrived. And here, what I'm doing here is I will release the FIFO. Yeah, and that's about it. No, wait. Okay, this, it should be, it should look like this here. Yeah, now it's correct. Okay, cool. So now let's take a look at the main function, how I have implemented um, the interface between the USB logic and the main function. So what we can see here, here I have set up an array with all the GPIO pins I can set over my expander. Here I'm in it, all the GPIO pins for output operations. And here in an endless loop, I'm checking if the endpoint one flag is one. If so, I disable interrupts and I go through this endpoint one buffer. And in case the first bit is set, I will clear 
um, the output value of this pin. And in case bit 2 is also set, then I will set the output pin to 1. And after doing this, I will reset the m.1 flag to 0 and I will enable interrupts again. And this way, I've implemented a handshake between my USB logic and my um, main function. Okay, so now let me try to compile this program, but I think I will have made some mistakes. Okay, yeah, here it's just a typo, a typo, typo. <laughs> okay, yes. So let me try to clear all these errors here. So this should be, yes. Okay, so this should be a small p. Okay, let's see which mistakes are left. Okay. And somewhere I forget forgot to close a brace here. Yes, here it is. Okay, so now I should be able to build this. And now let's flash it to our microcontroller. Yeah, I think I still called it USB hello.hex. Okay, so we have flashed it. And all I will do for ver verification in this video is I will call ls USB to see if we can find our test device here, okay, and then let's check which endpoints this device has. So it's bus three device number six. And now we can see here a new endpoint, endpoint one, direction out, this is correct. So this is an out input, transfer type bulk, it's okay, and eight bytes of data can be transferred over this endpoint. Okay, great, so this is all you need to create an endpoint. I will do the testing in a later function, in a later video or in my next video. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.